Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? If there's one word to describe today's podcast guest, it would be ease. I met Diana Orke in school when we were 12, 13 year olds back in Peru, and I've seen her rock her entrepreneurial spirit from a very young age. From handmade jewelry to making natural soaps, there's nothing Diana can't do as long as she puts her mind on it. Now, having the determination is important, just as adopting a non attachment approach is. What does that mean? Well, so often we get attached to certain results and metrics that we miss the bigger picture. We're unable to see the other opportunities and lessons around us. We leave play out of the equation. But life is a constant dance of pivoting, readjusting, and checking in. There are things you can control and there are things you can't. In today's conversation, Deanna shares the lessons she's learned in the startup world, her approach on life, staying curious and open-minded, and motherhood. Deanna's passion for entrepreneurship and collaboration is at the heart of all of her work. As a critical thinker, design instructor, and ecosystem connector, Diana contributes to the startup and innovation landscape in Montreal by forging strong relationships with the various communities to enhance the positive impact in Quebec. From hardware to physical wellness to educational frameworks for entrepreneurs, Diana's passion is less the medium and more about the message. Diana has the fire to build things from the ground up, but above everything, she aims to use her design and technical skills to foster collaboration and creativity to support people working on problems that really matter. Diana is also now completing her executive MBA at Concordia University while raising her first child and building Go Coconut, a startup manufacturing play coaches for kids in Canada. In today's episode, Diana shares about her career journey, about the incident that helped her own her story and expertise early on in her career how she started a business in the middle of a pandemic, some common mistakes entrepreneurs make when starting a business, the importance of diversity and collaboration, how daily check-ins help her tune into her inner alignment and find balance, how motherhood has impacted her life, and being okay with figuring things out on the go. Come join our chat. Because I think Canada age was 13. Exactly. So since how old are more I than now? 15. Oh more my god. 18 years? Oh my god. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's such an honor because I've seen you grow and do so many things ever since we both moved to Canada and you're in Montreal right now. So you're an entrepreneur, designer, mom, student, you're finishing your MBA and you're pretty involved in the startup business landscape in Montreal. You always seem to juggle so many things with ease. Tell me a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, with ease. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> with ease. Um, yeah, so I think in general, I'm the type of person. Actually, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I'm very, very excited. It's, it's awesome to see you from this, this light uh, as the host. So it's, it's great to also see you grow. Uh, so it's not only me, of course. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm that I'm always, and you know this, I'm, I've been always the type of person that does a lot of stuff. Always, uh, it's something that I just, I think I, I can get bored very easily. So I'm always looking for new opportunities. I'm usually the type of person that says yes. So I find yeah. myself in 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 opportunities that I wasn't necessarily expecting, and it kind of happens. Um, and uh, right now, I'm in a moment where, yeah, I'm uh, I, I'm in maternity leave. Uh, I have a 10 month old 
Um, I'm doing my EMBA. So yeah, I'm in almost finishing. So finishing in a month or so. It kind of happened that I started a business as well. So it's, um, I, yeah, I don't know if ease is the right word because it's not easy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I do think that I have like a good support system around me. So it makes it a bit easier, let's say. Uh, right. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy. It's busy days, but I'm happy. Yeah. And I just wanted to call it the fact that you were doing your MBA while you were pregnant. And then you gave birth in the middle of a pandemic. And yeah. then a couple months later, you also started your own business, Go Coconut, your company. So I just want to give credit to that because it's a lot. And by ease, I just mean that you seem to juggle it with so much grace. Like I've never seen you stressed and overwhelmed or hating, you know, how people get annoyed at things that they have to do, but you've always like, okay, this is what I have to do. And it just seemed like, yeah, I've got to do it. <laughs> uh, well then, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, it's funny because when Nolan, when I was pregnant, and I think maybe that's how I just take the the my day to day when I was pregnant and you know everyone comes and tells you are you scared of childbirth because I was doing a natural birth so are you scared yeah. how are you feeling like all of this negative uh I don't know a negative mindset that was all there were, those were always the questions that I would receive and I was like listen he has to come out <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> come out and anyway somehow he's gonna get he's gonna born he's gonna be born so there is no point for me to overthink it to stress about it right now like there is nothing I can do it's just part of the journey that I am backed on and he's gonna he's gonna be fine and he's gonna be out so I think that's kind of like my approach to things in general <laughs> right. I go study and I'm like yeah I know it's hard uh, I'm gonna have certain challenges uh, but I knew that the, when I when I joined like school for example at the same time as I was pregnant I knew that there was gonna be challenges and I was okay with it uh, I had a big discussion with with Kevin, my partner, of course, as you know, uh, with him, with my family. It's like, this is what's going to happen. I may need support sometimes. And I think it's easier once you know, at least for me, once I know like, okay, this is this is the decision that I took. These are the reasons. And every time it gets hard, I just remember, this is why I'm doing it. Okay, this is why mm -hmm. I'm doing it. And I'm just like... Uh, I almost take it as a step. The same thing with pregnancy. You know, you have your three months, six months, nine months. It's like, okay, I have my first month of the studying and this. Then a second month, I'm almost there. So right now my next milestone is like April. In April, I'm. it's going to be out. Like it's done. <laughs> the school is done. I'm going to go back to work. But that's future Diana's problem. For now, yeah. it's like... It's not a problem right now. <laughs> Taking it one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If not, it becomes too overwhelming. It's just, no, I, I cannot. Uh, yeah, it has to be one day at a time, slowly. Everything is going to be fine. There is yeah. the, the problems that come up are never, I find, uh, I think other people have bigger problems than mine. So maybe it's just <laughs> healthy. It's like, okay, it's not that bad. No one is, everyone is healthy. No one is, you know, it, it, it's, it's in danger. We're okay we can live for one other day. It's going to be fine. So yeah. that's something that I always have in mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's been like, it's been your outlook in life. I think we were always like, Diana is chill. Like she can handle anything. <laughs> also really <laughs> positive about it because I think you get excited about challenges and how to solve problems instead of seeing them as issues or something that prevents you from doing something and now that I think about it and I think you definitely show your entrepreneur skills in high school when you were making like jewelry I remember you were like handcrafting them they yeah. were beautiful and you started selling them and I'm like that has to be like the inner business persona in you <laughs> how did you get started <laughs> that's that's funny yeah that's true uh actually because <laughs> so that was in high school but I started in elementary school so we weren't yet we haven't met yet yeah and I used to do jewelry at that time. I remember bringing like my, I don't know, bracelets to all of the family parties just to sell to all of my aunts. And of course, <laughs> because they would feel too guilty. <laughs> like, okay, I'll just pay you. Um, and I was always trying to upsell them. It's like, but are you sure you only want a bracelet? You know, because like a necklace will go very well with that. <laughs> Savvy. <laughs> Six-year-old selling like the handmade jewelry. Um, and then I remember even like, I learned how to do soaps. So I started selling soaps and then I learned how to do chocolate. So I started to sell chocolate. Like, it's just kind of like, um, uh, 
Uh, I think every time that I learn a new skill, especially like in crafting, because I'm very like manual, I like to do stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I would always find a place to sell it. So obviously my parents will give me the startup <laughs> money. Yeah, I would, money. Materials, I would get some money and spend it again. So I never really enjoy the profits, but right. <laughs> I would just continue selling. So that's true. It is sort of very, very early. That's so fascinating. It's almost as like it became a purpose to like make things and then share them with people. And then in a sustainable way where you can keep funding yourself, because I've done things where I make it and I don't want to sell it. So I give it away, but then I end up not making anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so That's it took true. me a while. It took me a while to <laughs> understand, you know, it's like an exchange of energy. Can you take us a little bit through, I guess, your career journey? Like what encouraged you or influenced you to, take the career yeah. you are currently in so it's it's interesting because um so i it, when i was in peru i finished high school right we finished high school and that was i was even uh gonna start university there i was gonna go in marketing uh i think even advertisement uh advertising i got accepted and all of that and then out of nowhere my parents decided to move to canada it's like okay in two weeks we're leaving to canada so two weeks yeah, it was, uh, and there's a whole story in there as well. Uh, it's a whole other issue, but uh, they kind of did it on purpose. Uh, we didn't know for many reasons, more from the side of, of my, my dad's business. Uh, that's the way that it had to go. So for me, it was like, okay, like I'm going to move to Canada, new place, new people, new industry. Uh, what am I going to do? Am I going to do the same thing? And when I moved here, I started researching, okay, what does it look like a Korean advertising? And I, it wasn't as interesting as the classes that we had in like the university that I was accepted in Peru. So it's like, okay, I need to find again, what am I going to do here? Um, and uh, as I was looking, I couldn't find anything. And my dad told me, uh, he mentioned, have you ever heard about industrial design? I'm like, I have no idea what that is. Like, well, you like physics, which is something that I love, but you also like art. So maybe it's it's kind of, of a mix. Like, okay, I got curious. I learned more about it. And that's how I started. So it was just a, a something that my dad mentioned. And I did research and I really enjoyed it. And it's, it's, it's interesting how that decision changed absolutely everything in my career. Like everything that I was expecting to get into. Uh, Mm -hmm. I started studying product design here in Quebec in college Um, and I started at the same time I think in my second year I started working in Mattel well now it's Mattel but before it was Megablocks so like Mm -hmm. the Canadian Lego Uh, (laughs) and uh, that's where I started my career in design I was working in the product department product design department but I was also as a student uh, in the graphic design because they realized that I was able to do, I, I had the same skill, like the, the skills needed for both jobs and uh, they needed support in both. And I didn't mind. I was like, okay, sure, perfect. I'm gonna be that bridge. And I became sort of that bridge um, between those two. And I finished, I remember CGEP and I started at Concordia. So I started study design. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because, well, in CGIP, I started in French and I wanted to do English because I wanted to connect with other different people, like a different world as well. And it was great. Like in Concordia, it was a very diverse type of study. Like it wasn't just one type of design. It was really an overview. And that's where I learned that that's what I loved. Uh, Mm -hmm. I love to see the connections uh, from the different points of view from design, but how the different industries or how the different sectors or or approaches are kind of like still connected. And when you have an overview over everything, you can you can build much more interesting experiences or products. Um, and I got to experience that through Concordia with the different classes that I had. And I realized because I'm a good learner, then I could get to learn a lot of the skills too. So that kind of like set me up into a position where there was a moment that um, at Concordia as well, there is this uh, organization called District 3, which now I work in, uh, mm-hmm. that they were, it was just starting at the time, they were looking for students uh, from, the dif- from different backgrounds, from different faculties to get together and work together on projects uh, related to innovation. At that moment, that's all that I knew. And I, I remember I went to a... Uh, an, inf- an information session 
Uh, and again, that moment is so clear because it changed a lot of things. Uh, I, I, I sat there um, and there was a, a guy next to me. I kind of like say, hi, how are you? No, I'm a student. You know, I was, I think in the, my second year of Concordia in design. And he says, uh, oh, uh, how are you? What's your background? I'm like, oh, I'm a designer. Where, what, what are you studying? He's like, oh, I'm studying um, aerospatial engineering. Uh, and my head right away is like, oh my God, that's so intense. What am I doing here? <laughs> Yeah, what, yeah. what am I doing in this information session? And he's like, he says like designer, like do you doodle and stuff? And I was like, no, it's more than that. He's like, okay. And he just turns and starts talking to someone else. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I'm clearly not in the right place. Like this is not the, the right environment for me. Uh, everyone here is engineers. They're smarter than me. And then the information session started, I couldn't leave. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> and the executive director comes and he starts talking and he asks the question like, okay, can you stand up if you come from engineering? You know, the engineers stand up. Can you stand up if you come from business? A lot of business people stand up because they're always everywhere. And <laughs> can people from, <laughs> there, there are, I am one of them, so it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, I say, okay, people from, from the fine arts. And I was the only one. Then I was the only one from fine arts and there was a room of 50 people. Whoa. And he says something that again, changed a lot. Um, he says, okay, everyone look at her. And I know you're not going to believe me right now, but she's going to be the person that is going to change absolutely everything on how you see everything. You're, no one is going to tell you to listen to someone from fine arts, but you should listen to them because they see things differently. And I was like, what just happened? Like it's, imagine that moment. I was so in shock, especially because right before I felt that I, all of the knowledge that I had was worth nothing. Right. Um, and someone like that, you know, uh, that he was the executive director of Z3. He's still actually, he's my boss now. Mm -hmm. uh, he said something like that. And that moment is like, okay, yeah, maybe I do have knowledge. Maybe what I know can have an impact somehow. It's not, it's nothing to be diminished. Um, and uh, I saw it after I, now I get why he said that. And uh, that kind of became the moment that I started to realize how design can have a huge impact in everything really. Like I'm, I, I'm a hundred percent sure, like in so many things on everything we do, whether it's from the physical point of view, developing a product, but it can also just be a mindset or just how we see things or even how we analyze how, whether it's a starting a business or not, it doesn't matter. It's just the design process. I have learned so much about it. And right now at District 3 at my job is I'm trying to share that with other people to create a common language to see, okay, how can you learn from, from the point of view of other people so you can develop better businesses, better products, whatever they're doing, right? So it was, Wait. it was, uh, Sorry, I kind of no, went off. Right no, here. that was great. I like. I love the fact that you shared a story because there's so many pivotal moments in our lives that it mm -hmm. either can, you know, traumatize you or like be the downfall. But you know, you had such a huge conflicting feelings happen in the span of probably like an hour where you felt like, yeah, what am I doing here? And I'm so proud of you for not leaving. <laughs> Cause like some people <laughs> would have left, like, even if it started, they would have just ran out. I'm so proud of you for sticking through it. And also getting to the other end where somebody was able to acknowledge your skill set because a lot of mm -hmm. times we go into environments where people are like, oh, I have all these degrees, I make all this money, and they are dismissive of others. Maybe not on purpose. I don't know. I I want yeah. to think the best of people, but having sometimes just having one person see you can change your your perspective, your career, <laughs> everything. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and and this is something that uh, like that moment i think that moment of acknowledgement i guess uh really changed the way i see people as well and it impacted my career in so many different ways like i think the fact that i became much more comfortable talking to people from different backgrounds uh and again in this context is engineering uh business and whatnot because the the, mm -hmm. the education system right now puts us in kind of like these silos 
and I became very comfortable talking to them. And right now, some of the projects that I'm working in, in, in at, at my job is basically bringing people from different backgrounds together and show them how they can better communicate. So when they go out in the world, they're comfortable having these discussions. They can acknowledge other people and they can see, or at least be, I guess, a little bit less biased by what we determine as, okay, if you have this certificate, if you have this paper, then this is in this box that I'm gonna put you. And if you don't, then you're not as important as someone else. So at least being able to see what everyone can bring to the table and everyone is an expert on something, whatever that may be. Like I'm an expert and I mean, guess in, from that point of view, you're too, like of having grown up in Peru. Like I was a teenager or actually more in elementary school in the nineties in Peru. And I'm an expert in that experience because I experienced it. No one has said that away from me. And I think just acknowledging that other people have those experiences too, and they're experts in that already kind of like bring so much more, uh, a little bit of compassion and understanding and empathy and opens up more conversations too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's... Especially now that people are more open to the talk of diversity, I guess us as minorities, yeah. we've always noticed, yeah, the places we go to, the most successful places aren't super diverse or inclusive and having, mm -hmm just having the door, a little window of opportunity where they're open to seeing other people's experiences and acknowledging it and embracing it. That's how you improve like design wise. And I think even human race wise, because it's about yeah. making, making sure that every difference is embraced and not different. And I love how mm -hmm. you brought that up together. Yeah, no. And, and it's, a uh, it's, I'm in the world of, of, of startups, right? And innovation and whether it's a small companies, but big companies, everyone is trying to innovate. Everyone's trying to be unique. So just by telling them is like, well, this is the first step. If you don't have a diverse group, and that means from people of different backgrounds, but different sectors, different expertises as well. Like, so it's good to have seniors, but it's also good to have juniors because they don't have the bias of all of the things that you cannot do, you know, and yeah. that's what we need as well. And just taking that first step is going to take you a little bit closer. So I think if we communicated from the point of view of what are you trying to get, if it's if it's a, a much more happy place, uh, people are comfortable and you create a good environment for innovation, then the first step is to start by having a diverse team and diverse from all of the different points of view, right? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that we got to hear from that. <laughs> I never made that connection, but it's true. <laughs> but it's so true. And I mean, innovation is also such a huge word. What does innovation yeah. mean? I don't know. And, then, <laughs> and everyone asks me this, like, what is innovation for you? I honestly don't know. Uh, just because um, everyone, uh, I think everyone has a, a different perception of what it is sometimes people call it innovation for me it's like it, it it's not and some others is like oh this is not and yeah it is for me <laughs> um i i think nothing can be created from scratch anyway um so i think it's just potentially using something that has been used in a different context and bringing to a new one that already can be perceived as innovation right like there is so many little things that make a difference uh, that we don't realize every day uh mm -hmm or some others that are huge disruptors, you know, like uh, uh, we know a lot of those, uh, but it's, it's everywhere. And it's, it's such a complex, complex, big word that means everything and nothing at the same time, to be honest. It's, it's right. uh, yeah, but, it's true. but that's my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Not it's everyone true. can agree. It's just about maybe doing something differently and seeing if there's results and if people are happier with it. I think that's, that's it. It's not yeah. super complicated, like you said. <laughs> so why, I know that you've been involved in the startup world. What are the most exciting aspects of the startup world? Because there's so much, you know, uncertainty, nothing is set in stone, like a lot of room to play, but also a lot of room for what the heck is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I love it because it's uh, most of the time, at least out of my experience, people that get into entrepreneurship uh it's because they love and they believe so much on what they're doing and that passion i love to see that passion like i think that what i'm gonna work on is gonna make some sort of impact uh 
I think it's important to have in mind it can have positive and negative impact, but that's a whole other conversation. But they believe <laughs> that it can make a change um, and they think that they're the right people to do it. And being able to jump, like to just take that jump and have that courage, for me, it's always impressive. I, I love that. And those are the best people, to be honest, to I love to have conversations with them of just what they're passionate about, just because it's so interesting and they know so much. And it's uh, it, every day that I get to work with them, it, it makes me feel like uh, I just want to help them. I'm like, okay, how can I make that dream come true? What can I do? How can I help you achieve that? And, and it's, uh, it's very rewarding. The good thing is, is that they also know that there is a risk. You don't know where you're going. Things can change very quickly. It can be successful and it can get destroyed in one month or two months too. So it's uh, knowing that um, I think it kind of makes me push myself a little bit more. It's like, okay, let's try to make it work. And if it doesn't, then let's learn what happened, why it didn't work out and how can I improve for the next time? And this is something that I repeat to our entrepreneurs is like, maybe the first business is not going to be the right one for many reasons. Uh, there's many reasons why startup can fail. I mean, I think it's nine out of 10 that fail, uh, wow. but maybe the second one, yeah, it's, it's big, <laughs> um, but maybe the second one, uh, it's going to be better. You know, maybe the, the, the things that you learn from the first one are going to help you develop a better business or I'm saying business, but it can be a nonprofit. It can be anything really. Right. Yeah. What are some, I guess, what are some common mistakes that you've noticed that startups make? Uh, common mistakes. I think it's um, definitely uh, jumping too quickly without doing the research, uh, mm -hmm. taking the time to just understanding who they're trying to help, why they're trying to help them, uh, why is it important, are they the right people, do they have the right resources to, to, to do whatever they want to do. Um, and that's something that we see often um, companies or people that are just starting entrepreneurs, they spend so much money for something that they haven't even, I, I, we say the word validated. We say that word all the time, validated there is an actual need. Mm -hmm. um, and if there is no need, then it's, it's, it's not gonna work as simple as that. So um, the number of startups is spending like, I don't know, $10,000 developing an app, an app or $10,000 developing a website and when the website gets out, no one uses it because they weren't solving the right problem. So just right off the bat, identifying what the right problem is, mm -hmm. uh, is the first step uh, that they have to take the time. And it's hard because most of the time uh, we're gonna ask as interpreters, we're gonna ask people around us. I'm gonna ask my friends, I'm gonna ask you know my family, what do they think? Uh, maybe I'll ask on Facebook, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. But those are not the people, the people that you should be validated. And no one is going to want to tell you, oh, it's a horrible idea. Stop it. Especially people that love you. You have yeah. to go and talk to people that it may be they're the potential customer, the potential user, the people that you want to help and see is this the, the right problem that you're facing? And if it is, how can I solve it? So that's definitely, I think, the biggest. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not easy. It's really not easy. I'm actually helping one startup specifically about that. And we just realized that the market that they, they wanted to tackle is not the right one. Uh, the, it's actually in context of senior, senior homes. Mm -hmm. um, and we realized that the seniors don't want the help that they wanted to give. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just, there's no point. If they don't need it, then why should we spend time developing it? It's not the right solution or it's not the right problem that we're targeting. So we need to continue finding. We need to pivot and, and find other ways uh, right. that we can help out. Gosh, it's like such an adrenaline rush because you get an idea, you're excited, you want to put it out. But then if you do the research and you realize people don't like it, it can be so heartbreaking, especially if yeah. you've attached everything into that idea. <laughs> How do you it's help hard. them come back from it? Even when they feel like, oh my gosh, like my worth, everything, I, I failed. <laughs> when you're like, no, you just need to go towards another direction. <laughs> How do you kind of bring them back? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's more about, um, we always try to make it user centric. So it's more about the user and less about whatever you're doing. So 
we start by identifying what are the the what are their needs what are their problems uh, and then if they have an idea does it solve and if it doesn't okay then is this the market that you want to go for because maybe and again i've seen the startups that do that it's maybe the the, the problem or the the solution it's not something that they want to develop it's not something that they want to do it's like it doesn't make me happy it's like right. i know i get the problem but i, I don't want to do that and well okay let's find something else then then is there another problem that you're passionate about that you want to solve so it's more about the problems i guess mm. rather than solutions and that's how i bring them back it's like okay so what did we learn because even what invalidating even realizing that it's not the right thing it's good because it solves you money, it solves you time, it solves so much stuff that you have saved because now you know that it's not the right fit. That's perfect. That's a good thing. Let's try to find something else that and I think when you when you change that mindset into I fail and you move it into oh now I know that this is not the right one. Perfect. You can you it's easier to move uh forward somewhere else. Yeah. I love how you brought that up because this is something that I'm like when I was in design as a designer, I always knew that it's about the user, my clients, if they're happy, it's fine. Like, cause it's not personal. I'm just translating what you want. But now that I'm like going more towards coaching and wellness and I'm putting my stuff out there, I'm so terrified, but all I have to do is just put it out there and get the data to see if that's what people need and then pivot. But I think there's so much mindset fears about attaching myself when I'm sharing out in the world. So yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that part because I've seen so many entrepreneurs who think of themselves as failures or that they're not going anywhere because they're too close to whatever problem, whatever their offer is. So it's tremendous to be able to take a step back. And I also love the fact that you brought up, okay, are you excited about the problem you're solving? Because so much so often we take ourselves out of the equation like you might have a great job opportunity all those you know fancy bells and whistles but does it make you happy that's yeah. so important can you talk a little bit about it and how maybe how you applied it in your life uh, yeah i mean it's 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 interesting because i think we forget we get into the day to day and then we yeah. forget that part it's like okay how do i fit on this whole story <laughs> yeah um, and um, something that I do, and I don't, I don't know if it, it, it works for, for everyone, but at least I know that it worked for me, is I just like to, there's two things. I like to, to, to talk alone at my house by myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just like, say, like okay, this is, this is what I'm doing. Does it make sense? What I like about it? What I do not like about it? What can I do to avoid doing less of the stuff that I don't like and more about the stuff that I like? Um, and just have conversations about myself constantly like that's something that I try to do um, and I think it kind of helps me remember uh, why I'm doing certain things like it's okay why do I like it and I ask the five whys you know mm -hmm. like why 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 to try to really get into to the the reason the real reason why I love something um, or what what I'm afraid of and I think it's okay to be also aware that I'm afraid of certain things I I think I've never jumped into a, a, a I don't know, like a, a, an opportunity without thinking of, okay, what, why would it, why shouldn't I do it? Why am I afraid of this? What did someone mm -hmm. think that I'm stopping me? Okay. If it, if I, if it's fear, is it something that I can, I can live through? Is it, is it okay? Is it a good fear or is it a fear that it might make me paralyzed and it's not going to help me? develop and learn how can I solve it so at least acknowledging mentally helps um, yeah. and, and another thing that I do I just bounce off ideas and I do check-ins constantly with uh with Kevin with my partner mm -hmm. every day I just ask him it's like okay what are what are you doing do you think it makes sense do I still like this job do you like your job like just asking very quickly or at least open up the 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 conversation and doesn't need to be we never do like huge conversations unless it's needed. It's just like five minutes check in. It's like, okay, do you think it still makes sense with what I want to do long term? It does. Okay, great, perfect. And we just police ourselves and you know, yeah. like, <laughs> making sure that we're still in the right track. Um, and I think sometimes it has happened that we realize like, oh, you know what? I actually don't like it as much. Okay, so what do we do about it? 
let's 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 brainstorm let's do it together what are some of the 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 options that you have because we and this I, I think we're we're privileged in a way that we have options mm -hmm. not everyone does but it, i think we do so at least acknowledging okay what are different options what what can we do and uh that also help us see it's like okay uh how long am i willing to stay here how long am i like is it is it worth it like the sometimes the, the the things that annoy us every day is it actually worth it for the rewards that we get you know mm -hmm. and what is that and yeah it happens sometimes that uh we realize okay no it's enough about this opportunity let's let's cut it out let's move to something else mm, that's such a healthy and important habit to have thank you for sharing <laughs> just like the simple check-in i really like it because it it doesn't require you to take, you know, an hour of meditation, an hour of workout, journaling, you know, like there's all these tools out there that is supposed to help and support you, but it can also overwhelm people because they're like, yeah. I don't have an hour to meditate every day. You have to find what works for you. And both of you, you and Kevin, you've clearly find a balance. We just need to check in. Something working feels good. No. Okay. And if it doesn't feel good, brainstorm, take it as like an opportunity to go somewhere else. So I hope our listeners are, you know, getting some ideas that you can <laughs> follow through. So it doesn't have to be to complicated. Yeah, yeah. Until you find what works for you, you have to find what works for you. Yeah. So thank you for that. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in our lives so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. I wanted to talk about the business you started recently, Go Coconut. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. How did it come up? Why? Who do you serve? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is funny because... Um... So when, when I got pregnant, I discovered this new world. Like it's a world that I never really interacted with. Uh, this, this world of, 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 of parenthood and all of the different things that are out of the market and trying to do research for the thing that works the best for us and for Nolan. And um, I, I discovered all of that. And, and I realized that there was this one product um, that wasn't available for people. Like it's this play couch uh, in the U.S. that is very well known, and it wasn't available for Canadian parents just because it was so hard to get. It was impossible at that time. There was they were really the only ones in the market. Um, Canadian parents didn't have access to it, um, and if they did, because some people would sell it in here, it will be like two or three times the price. So a product that will cost like I don't know three hundred dollars or three hundred and fifty Canadian, people were selling it at like eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars like this I cannot believe this like it doesn't make any sense um so uh that's when I was pregnant and I got into that world and I was doing my MBA at the same time and we had this entrepreneurship class so I told my my colleagues it's like hey listen like there is this this new product I have the right background to develop it you know do can we just do our research you know going back into do your research yeah Let's do your research <laughs> and see <laughs> if it will make sense or not and I spent I think like four months just on Facebook groups, learning about what their needs were, uh, why people were buying it, why it was so great. It's, it's a play couch. It's just foam and fabric around it. Like there is nothing more magical than that. I but want it. <laughs> I want it for myself. <laughs> but it's, it's comfortable. Like you can build a little cabin. You can build so many things. Then, and it's so simple. And what I loved about it was it's such a simple concept but it can be, it's so versatile and it can grow with the, with the children. That's why it was, everyone wanted it. So when we were research, then I started to really realize more, okay, like this is actually something that we could, we could develop here. I wanted to develop something that was made in Canada, especially because we were there in the pandemic. A lot of people didn't have jobs. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, maybe it could be a, a way for us to create some new jobs um, and to do something that I love, which was product product design that I haven't done in a while at that time because uh, I moved into service design and then I moved into more like a, uh, yeah like I was working with the startups I was doing design but in a different way it wasn't like actually 
products like I could touch. right building wow. it and you can touch it and just to just to get a little bit of a clarification so gokuna is kind of like a, a module of cushions that work as a couch and then you can build forts and whatever you want assemble and disassemble yeah exactly that's pretty much it it's just like four pieces like two sort of uh, long cushions and two what we call bases like big squares Mm -hmm. uh, and you can just build whatever you want. And this is for kids. So it's it's de designed for children. We say like from far, four to nine, but I mean, I have a 10 month old and he uses it. Uh, <laughs> you want it. So it's not, it's yeah. not <laughs> as a 31 year old, I want it. <laughs> I want to yeah, build exactly. my own fort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I sometimes I just hide there just because it felt nice. It's warm. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that, thank you. That's true, the clarification. <laughs> I didn't even explain what it is because I'm always in there. So I, forget. I know, I know it too. So I got excited, but also maybe our listeners don't know what a go coconut is. Yeah, so. no. yeah it makes sense. Yeah. So, so we started this uh, and we, we developed the product. Uh, we did a lot of testing to try to see, okay, what materials could be safe for kids? Uh, what could be awesome for building? Uh, what is the best shape? Because I live in a small apartment. I didn't want something that was going to be huge and take my whole house. Uh, but I did want something that was going to at least be versatile and, and grow with Nolan. So, so then uh, that's how I decided that I like, I designed it having all of this in mind. And this happened just last year. I think I started, let's say, doing my research uh, when I was still pregnant. So, well, I guess March, April, um, well, I started school again in September. So in September, we actually started doing real, like uh, doing the, the math Let's say the finances mm -hmm. like this did make sense is it viable uh because we knew that it was a desirable i knew that it was feasible from the product point of view i just needed to do if it was a viable business too and after doing our research we realized okay you know what let's just do a test first so we found uh one of uh, one of the founders had a friend uh who's a manufacturer and uh we told him the idea he's like okay let's do a you know let's let's build some let's do a test and it grew so quickly. I was so surprised on how many people were interested in it here in Canada. This was last year, November. Um, we started selling and then it just, it just kind of happened very quickly. Obviously, we did a lot of work, but uh, mm -hmm. right now our, we have customers that start to receive it in December already. Uh, so December, January, right now we're in the February uh, orders. Uh, we were sold out for the first months. Right now, the next delivery, I think it might be June because uh, it's growing very quickly. And the good thing is like it's made here, which is something that I'm very happy that we managed to find a way to to make it in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, not all of our materials are Canadian. We're still looking for 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 fabric uh, and we're very transparent about that. I mean, our fabric is, is from China, but we're looking for Canadian manufacturers as well. Uh, but uh, it's it's something it's awesome to see how people just love it, like the fact that moms send us messages, just private messages saying like, "Hey, my kid has had it since November or sorry December," and like they have played nonstop every single day. Um, I'm like, oh, this is so exciting! <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. And like all of the details that we did, like each each little piece that we designed is like, okay, I, it needs to be like this. It needs to be like this because there is a reason why we built it in a specific shape. It wasn't just random. Um, and that our customers appreciate that, that the things that made it different, that it was a risk. I remember at that time uh, when we were making decision, I'm like, okay, I'm not so sure if everyone's going to love it. I feel that this is how we should go. Let's take that job and Again, let's put this this little thing out there and see how people react. And it ended up all of those decisions that we did, all of those risks, risks. That's the reason why our customers buy our product. It ended up becoming our differentiator from everyone else. Because right now the market now, it's uh from having no one in a few months. I think there is like six different companies that pop up, uh, mm -hmm. but. We, I've been very happy that we ended up finding our differentiator, our own product, because we designed it having like actual users in mind and not just 
you know, whatever, let's just put something out in the market. Like that wasn't my approach. So yeah, yeah it's, it's exciting. <laughs> I'm so oh, excited. It's I love seeing it. And like, how was the process for you going from, you know, the initial research idea to the final, I guess, decision making to piecing it all together and with your team as well? How was that process? Was it like exciting and nervous and just daunting <laughs> and in the middle it of was, a pandemic? <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's weird because, um, in the in the in the usual you know day when there wouldn't be a, like a pandemic in the, our day to days I would have done like I don't know months probably of, of, of testing with a lot of people a lot of customers uh, having several kids I don't know coming to my place or I going there but with a pandemic we couldn't do that like you mm-hmm. you cannot just uh, ship stuff out to people and make them share because there is all of these health issues that we need to have yeah. in mind even just taking photos when we were doing the photo shoots we couldn't have like a lot of kids playing with it at the same time we needed to separate it and 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 change we were changing the covers all the time um so there was a lot of there were a lot of challenges with with the pandemic of course but at the same time because we were in the pandemic and the parents really just needed the product we did tests we, we needed all of the tests to make sure that from the design point of view and for the usage photo view made sense and it kind of like forced us to move quicker than we expected, at least for starting selling, because parents were at home with their kids and they didn't know what to do. And winter was coming <laughs> yeah. so close. It's like, okay, I need this now. It was like, okay, let's try it. And, and it worked out. And the whole process, it's uh, from the idea, I guess, to the, the actual product. We spent so many nights just drawing it out sketching we did so many prototypes uh for the product itself uh just to see you know what what we can develop but also as a company what do we want it to be uh because we know that now especially like we have a voice as well uh even though we're small we're 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 babies right like (laughs) we're not a huge corporation anything like that um we still have a responsibility uh, and that was something that was very important for us. So just making as transparent as possible. These are the decisions that we're making. These are the challenges that we're facing. Because recently, I mean, we just had fabric scarcity uh, issues, which mm-hmm. means that some of our deliveries were having challenges. And we just were honest with our customers. We're like, listen, like this is these are the problems that we're facing. And but these are also the solutions. And the 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 community that we have created has been amazing uh people are so so nice (laughs) like it's uh i I was so afraid telling them like the truth about certain things like some of the problems Mm -hmm. that we were having and the feedback was just uh unbelievable like people were so so nice and and respectful and understanding of the challenge especially developing a business during the pandemic Mm -hmm. um and appreciative that we were still trying to find solutions for them to still get a couch. What we ended up doing was we just changed the, we got other colors. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now we're working at it so we can ship everyone. But it's, uh, I think there was a lot of learning in a short amount of time. The whole process from the idea that came out, which was just an idea. And the whole time I was like, should we do it? Maybe not. Should we do it? Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I still have to <laughs> But Nolan is it's growing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like the whole time, yeah. Um, I was like that, and during the whole time, I wasn't sure what my role was either, and it was stressing me out. Like I, even though I love the product, even though I love mm-hmm. the idea, I knew people needed it. I knew that we wanted to jump. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted my role to be because um, I was. I'm, I'm still in school. Uh, I have a job that I love. And now in my life, it's Nolan. So is it the right time for me to start a business? Like, should I be doing this? If I don't do it, who can do it? Uh, do I have to do it even? How does uh, the people around me, how do they feel if I'm jumping? Because it just means that I have a limited time for everything, right? So if I'm yeah. spending time on this, that means that I cannot spend time on other stuff. So what are the trade-offs that I'm willing to do? And and. Is, is it, am I, am I comfortable with it or not? And for how long? Because I also like to put like timelines just in case, <laughs> just to do check-ins again. It's like, right. is it still aligned or not? And uh, the moment that I decided like, okay, 
I need to take charge on this. Yes, I can do it. And yes, it's something that I want. I, it was like, <sighs> okay, okay. Because until I didn't take that decision, I realized that it was stressing me out because we were so many people working on the same project and I was trying to be just more, uh, you know, like, okay, we can all, everyone do it together, but at some point you just need someone to take the lead. Yeah. Um, and uh, the moment that I realized, okay, yes, we can, I, I, I'll, I'll work with the team and, and we'll do it together and I'll take the lead and, um, that moment it was just way easier after just that moment that I made finally decision yeah but it was it was a little bit of stressful getting to that specific moment <laughs> yeah uh, especially because at that moment the business was had already started we moved so quickly yeah that, uh, yeah and no but it was it was good it's fun it's uh it's exciting it's nice to see the messages from people it's challenging because we have, of course, some issues always in production or that type of stuff. And how do we, re how do we uh, still deliver the products? Because that's our goal. I just don't want to deceive kids. <laughs> that's my yeah. worst fear. And I, and I wonder if your customers are, are compassionate and their responses are so warming to even when you have issues is because you've been so transparent like you've shown them you're a human being you're not just a corporation exactly <laughs> because especially online you know people are like I can complain and I've seen those I don't know what they call them keyboard warriors who just like I'm gonna complain and then they that energy it's pretty dark especially if you're on the receiving yeah. end but I think what makes you also different is that you're honest you're not trying to prove to them, hey, we're a perfect company. We have everything figured out. You're like, well, we're in the process of building it. And it's almost as if they're part of your experience, like they're mm -hmm. helping you build it. And I think people like that connection. Yeah, yeah. And 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 what you just said, it's funny, like that energy that we bring, even if it's online and everything is online right now, right? So yeah. um, when when I when we announced it, that we were having some issues with, with fabric scarcity, I remember, just feeling I was so scared I was so so scared I was ready for so many like hate messages hate emails I'm like okay yeah. okay it's fine and I read so much positive for people that were willing to work with us to figure out a solution which is great but as soon as there was one email that was negative and I I, I didn't notice that but that one email basically destroyed my whole day and I just mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything else. I, I, I needed to take a break. I would answer, I, I answered for a week uh, emails from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., like nonstop. I was just email, email, email because we needed to let people know what was going on. Yeah. And if I received an email like at 4 p.m., but someone just being negative, it would basically just destroy my whole day. I just couldn't do anything else. And it happened once or twice and that's what I realized like wow like the the power of something just a negative word can have unfortunately much more power than something positive mm -hmm. because the ratio of messages that we received it's it it, it 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 shouldn't have impacted me technically let's say it's like it was nothing compared to all of the love that we had yeah but it is still affected me so much and because I didn't want to deceive it. So it was an interesting learning from my point of view. It's, it was like, wow, okay, like it's, I need to be so mindful of, of how I'm, uh, how, how I speak, how I talk to people, the type of feedback that I give, even if it's constructive, like there is, it always, uh, it can affect people so much, especially online. We don't know how people write it, right? So I can imagine whatever I want in my brain. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always so hard. And I think as entrepreneurs, again, it's because what we put out there is such a labor of love. And of course, yeah. it's great when people love it. But when one person, it could just be one person, it just makes you forget about all the positive things. Yeah. And you just focus on maybe the mistake or maybe the issues that are happening. So again, thank you for sharing this because it's such an important thing that I think we're constantly learning. And because we spend all our time online, we might yeah. eventually get that one comment that we interpret it in a way yeah, that it just exactly. things or just trigger something in us. Yeah. Yeah, no, those were, those were uh, some hard, but you know what? It's always harder the first time that you read it. And if you let some time, you get back to it. It's like, okay, it's not that bad. It's okay. I can, I can do this, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh. I don't even know if I answered your question, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> you totally did. You okay, totally cool. did. <laughs> um, well, a couple of um, last questions. Um, how did becoming a mom shift your, I guess, your work style or your plans in the future? Did it change anything? Um, did it change anything? I mean, it's hard because I haven't, uh, I, I feel that right now I'm in, and maybe it's because I'm still on maternity leave, but I feel that everything it's so um, ambiguous. Like I'm creating new routines. I'm creating new ways of working. And there is like a lot of new that is happening. So almost, and th I think this is, <laughs> this is <laughs> something important uh, on my approach compared to, for example, Kevin's. Um, as soon as Nolan was born, I kind of let go of all the expectations that I had of having my old life back. Like I just kind of let it go. I'm like, it's just not going to happen. And there's no point for me trying to force it because it's just going to make me uh, sad or I don't know, sometimes regret because it happens. Like you can regret it. It's like, oh no, what did I do? I, I, I love <laughs> Nolan, by the way. But yeah, it, I know. You know, it, it's I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's normal. So, um, you know, it's, it's, so I, I just let go of all of those expectations and I kind of like accept it. It's like, okay, I'm going to have to create new ways of everything. And I know Kevin at the beginning, it wasn't like that. And I think it took him a little bit of time to get back. And I think that's why for me it was easier just to change right now. So it has it changed everything. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much my perception of things, maybe it has, uh, but just the, the idea that every single thing and this is a lot of the stress on me I guess but like every single thing that I do or I say it's impacting his learning too um it's making me much more conscious on absolutely everything like um I don't know like getting mad and stuff that maybe I shouldn't just get mad because there is no point of it uh I don't know like traffic for example I, I'm not the type of person that gets mad at traffic but if I was then you know, he's right next to me. And like, is that the type of experience that I want to create for him? Is it worth it? Maybe not. You know, maybe it's not that bad. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's shitty, but it's okay. You know, it, it's fine. So I think it's just making me much more uh, mindful of all of those details. Uh, I still swear a lot. I don't think it's going to change. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I just, I just gave up. I also let go of that, trying to change that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it, it, it definitely, uh, it definitely change. Um, I don't know how much people will notice it, but I do feel it uh, on, my, on my side. I haven't figured out though, how to balance things. I'm, I'm still trying to understand and figure out uh, all of that. And I'm aware of it and I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, and the good thing is like Kevin is also okay. He, he also knows that I'm trying to figure out. So we're just trying to figure it out together. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a process. I mean, you have yeah. an entire new dynamic with this person, this human being that has different needs every day. Maybe it doesn't stick to yeah. a routine or a schedule. <laughs> Not at <laughs> <So>. <laughs> all. He doesn't care at all about anything. <laughs> what is a schedule? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Doesn't care at all. He's so funny. But he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's very funny. So yeah. Well, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise, your experience. I wanted to close this with some rapid fire question. Yeah. Okay, cool. Are you ready? <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? Um, the best compliment I've ever received. Um, I think it's, a. Uh, it's just more actions, I guess, where people uh, bring me into, uh, let's say, some, some meetings or new projects, or they just ask me for my opinion or advice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just like, oh, okay, it makes me feel that uh, maybe I have still something to say <laughs> that might help them. <laughs> Appreciate um, it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's, oh, that's I guess, the best compliment uh, that I receive. And I think um, understanding the people that understand that sometimes I don't reply right away to my messages. <laughs> <laughs> That's also the best compliment because they know that I don't hate them. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I just have a hard time with that. Uh, and so, yeah, I, it makes me feel like, okay, like I, I'm, 
I'm around the awesome people, like awesome people are around me. So it makes me happy. So yeah. A book that's changed your life. Uh, changed my life. Um, yeah, I don't know if it would say it's a new, it's a, my new life, I would say. So again, mm -hmm. with, with, with Nolan, uh, it's, um, uh, actually there's two books. Okay. So my new, <laughs> my new life, it will be, uh, the Montessori toddler. So it's just basically how can you raise uh, an independent child um, mm -hmm. and all of that, just the Montessori approach and, and how, how to speak to kids, how to create the right environment for them to, to become independent human beings, even when they're super, super young, it just changed a lot of, of, of my, my approach, of course, of parenthood, which is still new, of motherhood, I'm still new, but definitely uh, change it. And I think it's also impacting my relationship with adults too, not only with kids. Um, and another book that I love, love, and this is, it's not a huge intense book. It's not like life changing from, from, from that point of view, but it's just how to ask better questions. Um, the book is called, uh, the mom test. And this is actually a book that we recommend to our startups. And I recommend mm -hmm. to all of my students when I give workshops and whatnot. Um, it's just a book that tells you how you should be asking the right questions to get the right type of information so you don't get biased uh, by by people. So for example, if you ask something to your mom, it's like, mom, do you like this picture? Most likely she's going to say yes because <laughs> she doesn't want to hurt your feelings. So how do you ask the question in the right way um, so they actually tell you the truth? And I just love that book. I think that has made my life, not only my professional life, but just my personal life <laughs> and like everything way better because I feel that I'm just better at asking questions. I don't get money by this book, by the way. It's just, I really, <laughs> it's I love it. It's, it's such a small book, but um, I think as humans, we're just not good at asking questions in general. We're just horrible at it and we don't yeah. learn how to ask questions. So yeah, I really, really, I really like that book. I'll add it. I'll add it in the show notes so people can find it. Um, what does coming home to yourself mean to you? Um, coming home to myself. Um, it's a. Uh, it's interesting because the 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 concept of home uh, for me changes all the time. In the sense, like like honest, it's it's like innovation. I don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's a uh, it's maybe just being able again I think it's when I when I'm talking to myself do you remember mm -hmm. what I mentioned earlier when I'm at home and I just talk to myself and <laughs> just having yeah. conversations I think those moments kind of like make me realize um, most of the time they sometimes becomes cathartic like I've had conversations even in my car and I just start crying to be honest mm -hmm. uh, just because a lot of emotions come out so I think just being able to, to do that take a while like sometimes and sometimes I just laugh because I'm so happy and I realize how how lucky I am mm -hmm. um, I think taking the time to do that that is something so simple um, it makes me feel good I'm just like okay I'm in the right path or no I'm not what can I change about it so yeah, yeah I think I guess I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, uh, totally. So I'm learning there's this thing called human design, which is kind of, it takes a notion of your birth chart and like the planets and all that to kind of define your energy. And I learned that some people have a defined throat, which is like a defined chakra, which means they process things by speaking out loud. Mm -hmm. Like they have to, they might be like talking to someone and they're asking a question, but the moment they ask the question because they've said it out loud, they've been able to process and they already know the answer. Like they don't need to hear from anyone, ah. but they have to yeah. talk. So like, if you, if this is your process, embrace it. And if anybody listening can relate to that, yeah, do it. <laughs> Why not? Especially if it helps you. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. I think that's my thing. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. Definitely. <laughs> what would you like more of? Uh, more of, uh, more of, um, I don't, I don't, again, I don't know if it makes sense, but I would like to have more, uh, I guess feel more comfortable. I don't know if that's, that will fit, but comfortable mm -hmm. saying no, uh, I'm mm -hmm. still having time 
a hard time saying no to things just because I don't want to um, overwhelm myself. Um, and it's still something that I'm learning how to do. So, yeah, and I would say time, but I think everyone can always make time for things. Uh, it's mm-hmm. just how you allocate it. So it's, it's, it's hard right now, of course, with Nolan, I guess uh, it's just more time with him. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely more and more time and hang out with him as much as I can. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice for your younger self? Um, I think, uh, yeah, it would be, uh, you have imposter syndrome, just Google it, <laughs> you know, I think that would be it, um, because I realized that too late and now I'm still, you know, working through it, but I think my younger self would be, yeah, very early, uh, yeah, you, you have imposter syndrome, um, it's, it's a thing that you're just going to have to live with it. And until now it's fine, but the, the, the faster you, you know, you figure it yeah. out, then the easier it's going to be after. So yeah, I think Ooh. that will be. Yeah. That's a good one. Like imposter syndrome. I think we can all relate, but it, it's not talked about. So thank you for bringing yeah. that up. <laughs> oh, I mentioned it casually in every conversation. <laughs> and so I didn't even know I had that until I, I was put in a position where I had to share what I love to do and I feel like I I feel like an imposter um anyways um where can people find you um yeah so I'm uh, actually on LinkedIn that's the Mm -hmm. that's a good way to find me uh well Diana Orke on LinkedIn or or uh, on Instagram is at uh, the Orke I think uh yeah and Orke is D-H-O-R-Q-Q-U-E Okay. Yeah, I also okay. added to the show notes as well, just in case, but yeah, I'll link everything. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> this was fun. Thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.